In this video, I wanna break down four steps to mastering blockchain. Because I get this question all the time is, I wanna learn blockchain, but I need a step-by-step -step plan to get there. So that's exactly what I'm gonna talk about in this video. I'm gonna break it down into four steps that you can follow to become a blockchain developer. So before we get into that, if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory from DAP University. On this channel, I teach you how to become a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then click the like button down below and click subscribe. And if you wanna take that next Next step to mastering blockchain, you should join my free training on my website over at dapuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. So what are the four steps to mastering blockchain? You know, where do you start? How do you just follow this proven system to get there and become a blockchain developer? So that's exactly what I'm going to break down. I'm going to show you the programming languages uh, and, you know, what you should do step by step. All right. So step number one is to establish a goal. All right. So if you want to learn blockchain, why do you want to do it in the first place? And here you want to be really specific. You want to figure out what you actually want to build. What are you using the blockchain for? Are you trying to create something that uses a cryptocurrency that does financial transactions? Is it like an ICO, a voting application, marketplace, medical records? You know, what is it? And you want to establish this before you even get started, okay? Because you want to have a goal. You want an end destination in sight so that you can break everything down to get to that point. And if you're brand new and you don't know yet, I would just pick something because having some purpose or end goal in mind is going to make it much easier to learn because you're going to learn everything uh, in order to achieve that one single goal. And I'm going to talk about that more in a minute. All right. So that's really step number one is pick what you want to learn blockchain for. Pick the use case, like, you know, tell yourself why you want to learn this in the first place. All right. So the next thing is to learn the essential skills to accomplish that goal. Okay. So I get this question all the time. People say, hey, I want to become a blockchain developer. Should I learn blockchain first or should I learn some other programming languages before I get into blockchain? And I just answered this question in another video, but I want to repeat it in this one because it's so important. It's so critical. And, you know, this could save you months and years of frustration. And that's that I think you should learn blockchain first. And that that goes back to that whole idea I was talking about just a second ago where you want to have really specific goals in mind when you learn because when you have a purpose it just gives meaning to your learning and it's going to make it so much more effective so i don't think it's good to get, go learn a bunch of uh you know prerequisites before you learn blockchain i think you should start with learning blockchain the essential skills and learn everything else as you go around that to help accomplish your purpose all right so what are some of those essential skills well i'll show you here on my screen um, so the first would be like the Solidity programming language. If you wanted to become a blockchain developer, you need to have some knowledge of how to create smart contracts for Ethereum. So the Solidity programming language is how you do this. It's a very beginner-friendly language. It looks a lot like uh, Python, JavaScript, C++. It's a pretty easy language to pick up as a beginner. And learning about Solidity and how it works is going to teach you a lot about how the blockchain works in the first place and how a public blockchain like Ethereum functions. Okay. So the other programming language would be JavaScript, is what I would say. All right. So you want to learn some sort of language that interacts with uh, Ethereum from a client side perspective or some something outside the blockchain itself. Um, and that's why you, I would learn Python or JavaScript. In this case, I'm going to go with JavaScript if you don't know. Uh, if you don't have any suggestion, I'm just going to suggest JavaScript because it's more flexible, right? You can create client side websites, you can create backends, all kinds of stuff, you can create mobile apps. Um, so if you're already a Python developer, that's fine. You can stick with Python. But I'm going to tell you about JavaScript and Web3.js because this is the uh, library that teaches you how to you know, interact with Ethereum from you know, a client perspective. So you can create transactions. That's fundamental for learning blockchain development. How do you just you know, send cryptocurrency on Ethereum? How do you create other types of transactions like interacting with smart contracts and things like that? So Web3.js is definitely a must-know skill. That's a part of that second step. So if you're a Python developer or you're just you're sure that you want to learn Python for whatever your use case is, maybe you want to build a backend or some other type of app, um, you could also check out the Web3Py version of Web3.js. Okay, There's other languages that have this as well. Maybe you're a Java developer. But there's also a Java version. So that's step number two, all right? So you want to learn the essential skills and learn everything else as you go, okay? So I'm gonna talk about how you learn other stuff, and that's you know tip number three, or step number three in this case, which is to start building tutorial projects. So I think that building you know full stack tutorial projects is the best way to learn because it's the most efficient, all right? You learn by doing. Whenever you have this purpose in mind, if I want to create this app, you learn the fundamental skills about like creating Ethereum smart contracts, creating uh, you know websites that talk to them or some or some sort of other client. It fuses all the skills together, and you just learn by doing. 
it's much more effective than just doing coding challenges in your browser because it gives you context for what you're learning and also gives you an end goal, a purpose. So I'll give you some examples of these uh, tutorials. Uh, I just released one pretty recently, a uh, full stack blockchain application tutorial where it's like a three hour course where I show you how to build a blockchain based social network. That's one you can check out, uh, dappuniversity.com forward slash articles forward slash blockchain tutorial. Um, and you can also build a marketplace. I show you how to do that as well, or you can like a, do an e-commerce marketplace on the blockchain with smart contracts. And also a really essential skill for blockchain developers, especially Ethereum developers is having having a knowledge of uh, digital currency. So you can follow my tutorial on how to code your own cryptocurrency on Ethereum. And this is a really big thing that I would highly recommend understanding for blockchain developers, okay? So another thing, um, you know, I think building full stack tutorials is the best way to learn. Now, that being said, at the end of the day, you do need to fill in some gaps, right? Whenever you just learn the minimum to accomplish these goals, you'll have some holes, okay? But that's okay. It's easier to fill these holes after you've learned uh, how to build really foundational skills. And so I would recommend maybe focusing on, you know, the language. So for example, you know, maybe you build a full stack tutorial and then you go do some JavaScript lessons on the side after you've done that work. Like maybe you get stuck and you say, oh, I need to learn more JavaScript. Well, maybe you go do some tutorials on the side that teach you how to do that. And the same goes for the languages for blockchain, right? So I've got other tutorials that show you how to do this. Like if you want to learn more about how to use Web3.js outside of just building applications, I've got a full, you know, link tutorial, several videos that show you how to do that. Same thing for the Solidity programming language, right? So it's, it's good to learn the fundamentals of these languages separately from building apps. I always just recommend you do it after you've already tried to build apps rather than before. Now you can do whatever you want to. Maybe you're just more comfortable doing that, but I recommend the best way is to start building stuff because it's the most efficient. It gets you excited. And I see most people getting a lot of good mileage out of that strategy. So that's step number three. All right, so step number four, this is the final step, uh, is to build your own projects. So one of the pitfalls that a lot of people fall into uh, when they're trying to learn blockchain is that they get stuck in what I call tutorial hell. Basically, they do all these tutorials and they never really graduate from it and they can't get out of it. And they never really achieve their goal of becoming a blockchain developer. So there's a lot of different things that you can do to get out of this. But one of the biggest things is to start building projects for yourself. Okay. And basically it goes back to what I was talking about earlier. You, you think of some purpose um, that you want to build that doesn't have a specific tutorial. And then you just figure out how to solve the problem yourself with the programming languages that you've learned from these tutorials. And this is where you develop the real skills that you need to become a real world blockchain developer is actually, you know, solving the problems. That's that's number one, problem solving. And then also, you know, knowledge acquisition. That's kind of skill number two. So trying to figure out what the problem is, how do you solve it with all the skills that you learn up to that point? And whatever you don't know, how do you find that information? Now, if you're learning all on your own, you got to figure out how to do this for yourself. But if you have access to somebody else who can point you in the right direction, this can really speed this up a lot. So building your own project is going to solidify that learning, right? It's going to fill in all those gaps. And sometimes this is the hardest step, but it's the most critical because there's a pain that you have to overcome to break past this. But once you've broken past it, you will have graduated from this place that a lot of people get stuck in, which is just doing tutorials and never really achieving that goal. You'll actually achieve the goal once you've mastered the skills, figured out how to you know, think of an idea that you want to build, and you just build it. That's when you're a real blockchain developer. That's when you've passed step four and you've completed this entire thing, all right? So I hope that's helpful. That's the step-by-step -step system, the four steps to becoming a blockchain developer. So hope you all like this video. Hope you found that helpful. As always, subscribe to the channel, click the like button down below. Uh, and if you want to take that next step, if you want help becoming a blockchain developer, uh, you can join my free training on my website over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, until next time. Thanks for watching DAP University.